If you guys are lacking coins for all the new cards that are out, then check out MuleFactory.com. They're the cheapest site I've found for coins. They deliver in five minutes. And if you use TGC Kurt 5 at checkout, you get 5% off your order. Check them out with the link down below now. What's up, guys? Curtis here, and welcome to a brand new FIFA 10 to FIFA 17 episode. Usually, we do these around, like, a cup final or something like that. But I thought it'd be quite interesting to look at the, like, FIFA sweatiest players. You know there's those players where... Everyone looks at them and they're like, well, that's in every squad. Your Jack Butlins, your Hyung Min Sons, players like that, they're in every squad. I thought it'd be interesting to see how they got to the point where they're now in every single FIFA squad. What did they do to get there? What teams did they play for? So, without any further ado, uh, I'm away at the moment. I'm abroad. So, if my replies are a bit slow in the comments, apologies. I will try my best. So, don't forget to smash those comments, smash the thumbs up, and subscribe if it is your first time watching. Also, follow me on Twitter. Not enough people follow me on Twitter. Anyway, first player is Hyung Min Sun. I probably should have got him into the squad first, shouldn't I? But it's Hyung Min Sun. Fantastic player on FIFA. Arguably one of the best ones. We'll do his, his latest in form instead of the card that I have. Unreal card. He started off in FIFA 12 as a centre forward at Hamburg. Silver card. Interesting. Not bad at all. FIFA 13. He moves to Bayer Leverkusen. People. Bit of a step up, bit of a bigger club. He plays a lot there. He gets another striker card. He gets a left wing card. He's scoring a lot of goals from the wing. He's getting a few informs. He's banging in the goals. Moves to Tottenham last season. He has, he does all right. This year was his blow up sort of spell, especially since January. He started playing in more games. He was playing up front. He was playing on the wing. He scores a lot of goals, but... That is what has led him to go from 79 rated to having a 90 card because he's had like three man of the match FA Cup performances. He's been brilliant in the league. He's had two player of the months. So he's been a really like kind of patchy but fantastic player in that patchy spell, which has meant he's got loads of special cards. Not the team of the season though. Very, very good player. Next season, I'm sure when he has a full game, full season playing like 35 games, I'm sure he'll be in the team of season if he plays the way he has. Really interesting to see that how he's become one of people's favourite card, favorite cards in FIFA. So the first two I mentioned were Hyung Min Sun and Jack Butland. So let's do them both to get us going. Jack Butland is our second one. And he is obviously now like the, the most used Stoke player, most used Premier League goalkeeper. Everyone loves him from Stoke. He's just brilliant on FIFA. He's broken, basically. We've got to go back to FIFA 13 to find his first card. He was on loan. No, he was owned permanently by Birmingham City, actually. This may have been the season he was loaned back. Let me double check. He was owned by Birmingham. He wasn't ever loaned. He was loaned back for this season. He was loaned back from Stoke. He was bought by Stoke this year and was loaned back to Birmingham for one season. He had been on loan at Chelsea twice beforehand from Birmingham, but a really exciting player. The following season, he went on loan to Leeds. He had also had a little spell on loan at Barnsley in the middle of that, but the Leeds spell, that or the Derby one, that season was arguably the one where he was blown up into like the, the forefront. And then, of course, Asmir Begovic was sold by Stoke, and he returned to be one of Stoke's main goalkeepers. He had two fantastic seasons. Last season in particular, he was incredible. Everyone was saying, putting them in their team of the years, talking about future England goalkeeper. And then he had a disgusting injury right at the end of the season, which put him out for most of this year. He did get an 82 upgrade, which was massively deserved, but he missed out on a lot of this season, which is a huge shame for such a great goalkeeper. But hopefully next season he's back. He did play towards the end of the year, but hopefully he's back and stronger than ever next season. Next up, we have one of the most used players towards the start of the year. Everybody used this player in their foot champion squads. They'd play him left forward and move him striker. Absolute unreal player on the game. Just absolutely quality. And we go back to FIFA 15 to find his first card. He had a striker silver card at Monaco. Of course, that's where he honed his trade before going to Manchester United. Very, very good player. Not really used that much in FIFA, but good pace. Not, not the worst card ever. Then, of course, he got that big money move to Manchester United. Was upgraded to a gold and was actually a striker. He did play striker a fair bit. I think the game like where he transitioned to left mid, though, was like that Liverpool game. I'm, I'm sure you guys remember it. Really good game. There was a bicycle kick scored in that match as well. And uh, that was. I feel like that was his first left mid game, and he kind of focused on there a little bit more. Of course, this season, he's got that 82 rated card. He's got two informs, one at left mid and one at striker, I believe. Really exciting player. Hopefully, he gets more game time next season under Jose Mourinho. But uh, I really like him, and I think he's a very, very good player indeed. Right, we've all seen him before, but we couldn't do this episode without him. I'm going to rush over it really quickly. I think he's been in one or two episodes in the past. But N'Golo Kante, 92 rated team of the season. Now, of course, he played for Stade Malo de Cannes. 
I think that's the name of them. I've done it enough times. FIFA 15, he had that silver card. Moved to Leicester, had that non-rare card. And now he's obviously got this crazy Chelsea card. Fantastic, fantastic player. Um, been so exciting in the Premier League. Joy to watch. I mean, he got the Premier League player of the season. It's hard to do that from centre mid. And he did it an absolute plum. Very, very good player. Next up, though, one of the players to be involved in every single FIFA thus far, it's Chris Smalling. A really interesting one. I'm actually going to say before, in fact, I'll show you his first card was Fulham. And there's a story around this. Quite interesting. Chris Smalling actually played for kind of my local side. I live about 20 minutes away from them. They're like the highest in the ladder for my local side that's Maidstone United. And uh, really interesting, actually, he was on the cards of Maidstone. And there's a rule where if, there, if there's an England schoolboy, basically, you have to let them go for like a really low nominal fee to any Premier League club. And of course, Fulham were a Premier League club at the time. I think they ended up paying Maidstone like 20 grand, something absolutely pathetic. He then went, of course, of course went to Man United for an enormous fee and it's really annoying that they can't put in like a 5-10% sell-on fee in that which makes so much sense for a club to have to give their player up as like an English Football League rule. If you could get 5-10% of the next transfer, imagine a club like Maidstone right in the lower leagues if they got like 10% of a £15 million pound deal. One and a half million, that's enormous to a club like that. But sadly, it didn't happen. FIFA 10, though, he has his Fulham card. He moved to Man United in FIFA 11. Wasn't really much of a, a card people used in FIFA till about FIFA 13, 14. His FIFA 14 one was his best so far. Very, very good card. Great pace, great defending, great heading. Not bad for a cheap English card. He actually got a bit of a downgrade for FIFA 15. He wasn't that popular, but last season, he was very, very good. He was up to an 82. He got into the team of the season. A lot of people liked him. He's got quite a bit of a negative stigma this season. I feel like a lot of Man United fans haven't really liked him. I may be slightly off the base there, but I feel like he wasn't super popular this year. Really good card, though. 84, obviously, he's an OP FIFA player. But whether or not he'll be in future, uh, will be as good in future games, who knows. I do want to say, too, guys, if there's any players that I miss in this episode that you think should be in following ones, stick them in the comments down below, and hopefully we will include them in them in a future episode. But next up, we have another player that has been in every single FIFA uh, Ultimate Team, that is. That is Dries Mertens. A really exciting one. He's actually a little bit older than I realised. I think he's... Uh, oh, we use this one because I've got him. Um, he is actually, like, I believe 29, 30. He's old. I'll check. Why? Why? I have... Do you know what? I do this a lot in videos. I have the wealth of Google and I don't fact check stuff. Dries Merton turned 30 on the 6th of May. So he's getting on a little bit. But if we go back to FIFA 10, he was playing for FC Utrecht. He was actually um, owned by them. He played for Agov. I don't know who they are. They're, I believe, Belgian? Maybe. He had played for Ghent from 2005 to 2007 and did go through the Anderlecht and Ghent uh, youth setups. But... His, his, one of his bigger moves was to Utrecht. He played there for two seasons before going to the first two seasons there before going to PSV Eindhoven. This was where he kind of found his spell. Playing on the wing mainly, he scored 37 goals in 62 league appearances. That is not bad at all. Nearly a goal every other game. He had a couple seasons there, got into the team of the season before he earned his move to Napoli. Now, He's played in a few positions for Napoli. He played on the right for Belgium a lot of the time. Uh, he's got 57 caps for his country. He played on the left. He played in the middle and he played in his, on the right. He kind of focused on the middle last season and they moved him back to a left wing card. But obviously we've seen... All the informs he's got this year in striker, he's been playing up front a lot of the time. As soon as Arcadius Milik has basically been out, I think that's how you say his first name, uh, uh, Mertens has taken the wealth of that, that striking position. 28 goals in 35. Bear in mind, I think he played about 10 of those 35 on the wing. That's an unreal return, and uh, he's going to be very, very exciting to watch next season. Really, really good player, and uh, definitely one with a good history in FIFA. Next up is the one you hate to see. That is Ahmed Musa. Nobody likes it when you see him on that team sheet in the in your opponent's squad. We, he hasn't really had much of a change throughout his years. There we go to FIFA 13 for his first card. He was a right mid for CSK Moscow. If you guys aren't already watching my football manager save on the second channel, The Journeyman, we're currently managing CSK Moscow. So... If you're interested, go check that out. There will be a link in the description to that. But uh, he had a few seasons at CSKA. He was kind of deputised into Dumbia. 
he was okay. He'd play on the left. He'd play on the right. He'd play up front. Very, very quick player. And then, of course, got his move to uh, to Leicester. Not in FIFA 16, but FIFA 17. And that made him ultimately more usable. He was obviously linked with Dumbia beforehand, but now he's linked with Vardy. He's in the Premier League. You can put him in a lot more squads. And he is a deadly, deadly striker. He scores some weldies. It took me a long time to realise how good he was. And I scored a screamer. I put it on Twitter at the time. Scored an absolute screamer with this guy. Very, very good player indeed. And uh, I don't know. Very, very good player on FIFA is what I'm saying. Not really proven in real life. But it'll be interesting to see um, if he gets a move this summer or if he stays at Leicester. Who knows? Next up, we have one of my favourite players on FIFA this year. That is Raja Nyangolan. A really, really exciting card. It's actually quite nice that I've got a few of these in my club. A really exciting card though, Raja Nyangolan. He started off though... Back in FIFA 10. It's not rare that we actually get FIFA 10 to 18 on some of these. But he was playing for... I need to load up this guy's wiki. Because I do not know who that team is. And I don't want to embarrass myself by getting it wrong. So, at that time... Was that Cagliari? Was that what they looked like then? Or was that Piacenza? That may have been... That was Piacenza Calcio. That was who he played for in FIFA 10. My bad. He left them in 2010 to go to Cagliari. But... That was his first season, of course, he was then at Cagliari the following season. He was there for a few years, actually, and that was where he broke on the scene. He played 131 games for the club before actually going on loan to Roma for this season. I'm surprised he went on loan. It seems a bit of an unusual one to loan up. Maybe it was a loan with an option to buy because, of course, they then did buy him. In fact, I can tell you exactly now, on the 7th of January, he had half a season on loan to Roma for a fee of £3 million with an option to purchase 50% of his rights the following summer for £6 million. There you go. That's the answer. They basically played £9 million in the end to uh, get half of his rights. The following season, they then paid another £9 million for the rest of it. So £18 million to get this guy on a permanent. That's Euros too. What a sign-in. Apparently, he's been, they've been offered £40 million from Chelsea for him. What a great way to turn a profit. He got in team of the season feet for 15, feet for 16. And you'd expect he'll probably be in team of the season again this year. Playing a bit more further forward at times this season, even at one point, sent a forward role. Very, very good player. Scored a lot of goals. Been really crucial to, uh, to Roma and a really exciting FIFA player, that's for sure. We've got one more left. Let's get on to him. This one, I don't know how well uh, this will go down in this episode. He's a player that, in my opinion, is one of my favourite players to use on the game. And I think he's quite sweaty when it comes to FIFA. He's a proper, like, quality engine room midfielder. We're going to move the team around. We're going to put him up top where he belongs. Don't ask me why he's a striker card. But we go back to AZ Alkmaar for his, for his, uh, for his first season. Don't really know anything about him. I'm not going to sit here and tell you I, I saw him playing for AZ Alkmaar. I didn't. He was playing at centre forward at the time though. And that was what he was playing for when he moved to Fulham. He had two seasons at a centre forward card. This FIFA 12 Dembele means a lot to me actually. I packed that FIFA 12 team of the season card. And that FIFA 12 centre forward card. I scored one of the best goals I've ever scored. Early on in my YouTube days. It won me a top 5 goals of the week competition. And I won the entire series with it. And got 50 quid. Back then, that meant a lot to me. So, he, he's, he's a player I like, even though he's a Tottenham player. I really rate him. I think he's a very good player. He was a cam. He's kind of moved further and further back. He had a few seasons where he didn't really play. It wasn't until FIFA 16 where he started to become a big part of that uh, Tottenham squad again. Got into the team of the season. Really good player again this year. Playing a lot deeper. Centre mid, defensive mid. Kind of that bit more of a holding role. And uh, an unreal all-round card. Those stats are fantastic. And he's a really, really exciting player. But that, guys... Brings us to the end of this episode. This room, the temperature is insane with all my studio lights on, windows closed, computer on. It's very warm, so I need to finish this video, go drink some water before I pass out. Thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic day, guys. Smash that like button if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new around here. And I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys.